faculty, and she is um, a specialist in occupational therapy. And I know she works, her big goal in life is prevention um, of ergonomic challenges. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly. Um, I'm gonna turn off my camera and my microphone so that you just see her. And I'll be back at the end. We'll, again, um, we'll be keeping track of your questions at the end. And uh, Kelly was gonna leave a few minutes if people have questions. And um, this is it, the raffle is now closing. <laughs> Thank you. Joyce Robin, thank you so much for having me. Um, and Danita, pleasure to meet you. So I am Kelly Pesinelli. I'm gonna give you just a little bit about my background, who I am um, and why I am here with you today. So, um, you know, as I was introduced, I have my master's degree in physical therapy. Upon graduation, one of my missions as a healthcare provider is to prevent injuries. And when I graduated, I got a wonderful job working in the occupational health department at the New England Baptist Hospital here in Boston. But what I realized is I was treating people that got hurt at work and I realized that there were so many of those injuries that I could have prevented um, if I had just had the opportunity. So whether that was working with Boston firefighters, um, people working on, for those of you that know the big dig, I'm going back a little while when we suppressed um, our major highway system through Boston, um, whether that was working with hotel workers, um, the people that worked at a desk all day, there was so much I could prevent. Um, but unfortunately, the US healthcare system doesn't pay for me to prevent except for, um, Danita, thank you for allowing this to happen today. Blue Cross is sponsoring this so that we can focus on prevention. Um, and be proactive instead of reactive. After working in occupational health for 10 years, I decided I wanted to get more involved in research and academia. So I found myself working um, back at Boston University. We have an outpatient clinic um, on campus. And I also realized that through the university, I had the opportunity to focus on prevention for our employees, our custodians, our trades workers, um, our faculty, our staff, um, as Boston University had the opportunity to be able to invest in health and wellness um, for their employees. So I started an injury prevention program at the university um, and continue to do so today. And then March hit and um, I read that email. We were on spring break a Wednesday that we were going to have to pivot um, and all be remote. I am now on the faculty at Boston University full time in the health sciences human physiology department I was going to have to start to work and teach from home, which I had never done before. And my first thing to myself is I thought, okay, now I have to set my home up for a home office. Um, so I got out all my journal articles um, and that information is what I'm gonna share with you today. How did I turn my home just outside of Boston into a home office? So right now, um, as you can see, I do not have a green screen on. Um, you are standing in my dining room with me and you are going to see how I make work from home um, and then start into my presentation so that you can see um, the data-driven science behind the recommendations that I am meeting with, that I'm making to you today. So right now, as a lot of you can't tell, but I'm standing. Um, one of the things that's um, not the healthiest for the human body is to be sitting for eight hours a day. So what I'm going to do today is talk to you about, okay, when we have to sit, how should we sit? Um, and how can we stand and work from home? So first case, um, I have a high countertop in between my dining room and my kitchen. So what I've done is I place my laptop so that I am looking directly into the camera. Now, when do I use this setup? When I'm giving a webinar, um, when I'm lecturing, I will lecture and I can move back and forth and be in motion while I deliver a lecture, while I'm listening to my department meetings, while I'm delivering a webinar. So that allows me to alternate part of my day between sitting and standing. Now, not everybody has a high countertop in between their kitchen um, and their dining room. We all have kitchen counters. So how can we make a kitchen counter work where we're not standing and looking down and potentially straining our neck? As most of us are home right now, um, we have boxes that deliver packages in the mail. 
if you don't have a box that was, uh, you know, because you ordered something. Um, thankfully, most people recycle now. I actually got this box from my neighbors. Um, so I said to them, the next time you get a package, can I have the box? So I can turn my kitchen counter into a standing desk. If your kitchen is filled with people because you're home and your loved ones are home and you're not able to use your kitchen, you can do the same thing in your bedroom. If you have a dresser, if you have a bureau, you can sit a laptop on um, your dresser, your bureau. Um, the beauty of green screens is nobody knows the room you're in. Um, sometimes I've had to go into the bathroom because my house is just too noisy and I take box into the bathroom, put my green screen on and I'm standing at my sink and um, I'm able to create a standing desk. So there's multiple different places within your house that you can create a standing desk. Again, you have a conference call that you need to be on. Um, you're delivering a presentation. You can do that from a standing position. And we can't spend the whole day standing. So how do we make our kitchen table, our dining room table, um, our table and chair work from home? Okay. So what you'll see here is my setup. So you will notice on my chair, I have one of my couch pillows. You will notice I have a box on my table. That box allows my laptop to be lifted up so that when I'm looking at you, it's at eye level. The other thing that you'll see that I have is a bath towel. So we're gonna talk about what is the best position for you to sit in. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, a device that you can buy, it's called a tush kush, um, which we'll get into in a few minutes, but they're expensive. It's about $45. So how can we turn our current setup at home with a regular old chair into an ergonomically correct setup? So I have my bath towel. And what I will do is I will fold my bath towel into a third. So you can see it's thicker on the top and it's thinner on the bottom. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna place this on the bottom of my seat with the thicker aspect in the back. So you can now see I have my towel and I have my pillow. So with the thicker aspect in the back, that is allowing my hips to be higher than my knees, okay? Which is very important for support in your low back. So I have my box where my laptop is propped up on so that I can be looking at you eye level so that I am not looking down and straining my neck. And then my last prop for home is an old photo album. So with me sitting on my chair with my hips higher than my knees, my back resting against the pillow Okay, because the seat's too long for me, I'm only five foot two. Um, so the pillow brings the back of the seat up to my back. Well, now my feet are dangling. And that's not good for your legs and that's not good for your back. So I take my photo album, I place it on the ground underneath my feet. And now all of a sudden my feet meet the ground so that they are flat on the floor on the photo album, uh, bringing the ground up to me. So that is my current work from home um, situation. And what I'm gonna do now is share with you my PowerPoint presentation so that we can go through really the science behind why I'm making the recommendations that I'm making. So everybody should be able to see my screen now. As questions come up, um, we will be using the chat feature for today. So as questions come up throughout the presentation, I know sometimes you're like, I have to get that question out or I'm absolutely gonna forget it. Type it into the Q&A and I promise I will leave time at the end um, to answer your questions. Okay, so ergonomics. Okay, what is ergonomics? It is fitting the job to the worker. 
Okay. And your goal is to maximize productivity. So you have an eight hour workday and you have a list of 15 things to get done. And if you're uncomfortable, you're not going to be as productive. If you're tired because your body is sitting slouched forward over your computer all day, you're not going to be as productive. And worst case scenario is it's going to set you up to injure yourself. So what are some ergonomic risk factors? Okay. Repetitive motion. So in my clinical practice, where did I see the most repetitive motion injuries when people were working from home or working in an office situation using the mouse? Okay. So a lot of people will use their wrist when using an external mouse. Okay. And going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for prolonged periods of time that can lead to significant risk, um, discomfort An awkward posture sitting hunched over a laptop all day long is going to lead to discomfort and pain, but also sustained posture. Okay. Even if you are in the optimal position, Staying in one position for too long can also cause discomfort and pain. That's why I started today's presentation in standing, okay? Because you want to vary your position. That discomfort and pain ultimately can lead to what we term or what I term a musculoskeletal disorder. What's a musculoskeletal disorder? Neck pain, upper back pain, lower back pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, wrist pain, numbness and tingling going down your arm, okay? So these risk factors can, and this is my goal to prevent, I don't ever wanna see anybody, my, the best day in my life is when I don't have patients because that means nobody's injured. And that is my goal of being a physical therapist is to try to prevent as much as I can. So when we think about ergonomic risk factors, okay, we think about those awkward positions, um, which all too often the hardest thing being a physical therapist and you know working in academia is you know walking by some of my colleagues' offices and seeing this position. I'm like, they're not asking for my opinion, but it's driving me crazy that they're sitting like this um, when we are you know back in person. Sustained postures. Okay, so yes, he looks fabulous in this position, right? And being resourceful and using four reams of paper to elevate that monitor so that he's looking straight ahead at it. Properly using the armrests, properly having the keyboard set up, feet are flat on the floor, fabulous, but you can't stay there for eight hours a day, okay? So being in a sustained posture for too long is also a risk factor for injury. And then like I talked about, um, using that mouse, um, if you have an external one and using your wrist to move the mouse instead of using your arm to move the mouse. Okay, so designing your workspace. So first and foremost is you want to find, so at home, you know, what we say to children sometimes, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Um, so at home, we have one table, we have one, we have four chairs, um, and this is our homework situation, okay? This is my dedicated workspace, okay? Everybody knows this is where I work in my family. Um, when I'm working, it has to, you can't change my work setup. Um, it has to stay quiet and, you know, also to... Um, it has to stay secure. So from my perspective, when I'm entering in students' grades, um, this area has to be secure for me. Preferably, um, we live in the city, so you know we sacrifice space for geographic location, um, but preferably you should be away from the flow of traffic. Um, in a family with kids, um, you know, working right across from the kitchen is not ideal, um, but it is the best that we can do for our family working for home. Um, if you have a space in your house where you can work away from others, um, that is really ideal so that when you're at work, you can focus on work. Um, and then when work is done, you shut it down. Okay, so ergonomic setup. So this is our ideal setup. And there's six things we need to take into account, okay? One is the chair you sit in, you saw mine. Two is the desk that you're working on. Mine is my kitchen table. 
Next is your monitor. A lot of us are using laptops. So today I'm gonna to talk about laptops and I'm gonna talk about um, desktop models as well. I'm gonna talk about keyboards and mouse or mice um, that we use. Some of us are fortunate and when working with the laptop, we have an external keyboard and we have an external mouse. Um, I do not. I'm actually on our local, um, most cities and towns have what's called free cycle. Um, a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic ran out and bought keyboards and mice and external monitors so that they could set themselves up from home. If you weren't one of those people, um, as people start to migrate back into the workplace, a lot of people are putting them on free cycle websites. Take your Clorox wipe, which we can now get, um, wipe it down with a Clorox wipe or hand sanitizer, and it's a great way to, way to keep keyboards and and mice and monitors out of landfills um, and recycle them to people that will continue to work from home. Your surrounding, we're gonna talk about lighting today um, and setting up your workstation. Um, and last thing we'll talk about is your lifestyle. Okay, so selecting a chair. So at home, you have to find the best chair for you. So what you can see in this picture um, is the gentleman sitting in his kitchen chair. What you'll notice is that he put a cushion on top of the chair. It's actually one of his patio cushions because the chair was too low for him. So by sitting on a firm patio cushion, it allowed him to be raised up so his feet could sit flat on the ground. That allows for optimal position, okay, of your lumbar spine or your lumbar lordosis, your thoracic spine, your mid back, and your cervical spine your neck, okay? So the goal is for these natural curves to be followed as you sit at your workspace. Okay, so selecting a chair and seat height. So what you can see here um, is this was a chair that she had at home, okay? So the back comes up to just about shoulder blade height, which is where the chair should come to. Her hips, are at a 90 degree angle, okay? So between her torso and her femur bone. Um, ideally, that angle wants to be between 90 or a little bit higher. So ultimately, like I showed you with my towel, you want your hips to be a little bit higher than your knees. Um, for those of you that are with us right now, if you're sitting, we can practice this a little bit. So if you sit up nice and tall and you tilt your pelvis forward, you'll feel the natural curve in your back form. When your hips are slightly higher than your knees, you form that natural curve. Now, I know a lot of people will take a towel and fold it in half and roll it up and put that behind their lower back. Okay, um, when I was in school many years ago, that's what we told patients to do. And then we realized that's not the right advice. The right advice is to elevate the hips a little bit so that your body naturally forms your lordotic curve instead of putting something artificial in your low back and sinking into it. Um, her feet are flat on the floor which is exactly what you want. If your feet aren't flat on the floor, um, just like the example I gave you, you can use a foot, you can use a book, you can use an old photo album. Um, I was laughing as I was putting this together this morning. Um, we have an extra six pack of toilet paper because you can actually get toilet paper now. You can take that extra six pack of toilet paper and use that um, to bring your feet, the ground up to meet your feet. If you are in the office and you have an adjustable chair, or if you have an adjustable chair at home, how do you choose the proper seat height? So you want to face the chair and the seat pan, okay, or where you sit on the chair, that should come to the level of your kneecaps. So you face the chair, um, you move the lever that's typically underneath that allows the chair to raise and lower, and you want it to come to the level of your kneecaps. Okay, so selecting seat depth. So at home, we find our chair and we need to make it work. So like I talked about with my chair that I'm sitting in, the seat pan, okay, or the part that my buttocks sit on is too long for me. 
And what that did is that created compression between the back of the chair and the back of my knees. Now, every nerve, artery, and vein, so how your body gets blood to your legs, how your body returns blood to your legs, and the nerves that provide movement and sensation travel in the back of your knee. So when the edge of the seat compresses the back of your knee, your feet can go numb and tingly. And you're like, I don't know why my feet are going numb and tingly. Well, if there's compression behind the knee because the seat is too long for you, that compresses those nerves. So ideally you want two to three fingers between the end of the seat and the back of your knee. If you can't do that by adjusting a chair, what you can do like I did is take a couch cushion. Um, you want something that's firm. You don't want a feather pillow that you can just sink into. So you want something that's firm. You can also use that same towel um, or another a different towel um, and build up the back of the seat so that you're building up the backrest, moving you slightly forward so that the back of your knees does not come into contact with the back of the chair. Now, if you're on a wooden chair, okay, that has a sharp edge, you can also use a patio cushion to be able to um, make that edge of the seat a little softer. You can also use another dish towel, fold it in half, and put that on the edge of a wooden chair so that it's not digging into your legs. Okay, so chair backrest height. So ideally, okay, you want the back of your chair rest to come to the middle to upper portion of your shoulder blades, okay? To allow your thoracic spine or your mid back to be supported, okay? Um, at home, not everybody has a high back chair. So what you wanna do is just make sure when you are sitting and you can see in this model, okay? That the person's back is resting directly against the back of the chair. That is very, very, very important, okay? It takes some of the workload off of your mid back, okay? By sitting back and having that load supported by the back of your chair. Lumbar support, some chairs do have um, lumbar supports. And like we talked about, some people will take rolls and put them in, um, the back of your chair to fit naturally into that lordotic curve. Again, we don't recommend that anymore. Um, like I had talked about, this is probably one of the greatest, if you win, if you could buy one thing, if you were the winner of that um, gift card from Staples and there was one thing people could buy, um, I, it would be a toss up for me if you're working on a laptop between an external keyboard and mouse um, or a tush kush. Um, so this tush kush, what you can see, and I've made my, I didn't spend the $50, $45 on a tush kush. I made one out of a towel for myself at home. But what you can see is it is higher in the back and it is lower in the front. Okay. So you put the back of it against the edge of your chair on the seat pan. You can see right here. And what that does when you sit down is it elevates your hip higher than your knees. And again, when your hips are higher than your knees, it creates that normal lordotic curve in your low back, which is the best position. It's the position your spine wants to be in, okay? But again, I showed you how to create this with a bath towel at home. Um, so create, take a bath towel, fold it in thirds, put the higher end at the back of your seat, the lower at the front of your seat, and that will naturally elevate your hips, creating a more natural upright and erect posture. Armrests. So for those of us working at home from our kitchen tables too, our chairs do not have armrests. Some of them do, okay? You may have um, chairs that do have armrests. What's really hard is when you use an armrest, okay, you want the armrest to be in line with your desk or your work surface, okay? So if your armrests aren't height adjustable, sometimes it can be hard to use them. If they are height adjustable, again, you want your elbows bent 
to about a 90 degree angle. Okay, so 90 degree angle here. And the goal of an armrest, okay, is to allow your shoulders, your upper trapezius, your upper traps to relax. When we don't have armrests and we have to hold our arms up in space, the muscles that go from the base of your skull to the top of your shoulder, your upper traps have to stay constantly contracted. That hurts over time. That can be the cause of neck pain. That can be the cause of headaches. So what we want to make sure with our arms is that they are supported. Because when they're not supported, gravity right now is trying to pull my arms down. And my muscles are saying, mm -mm, I'm not going to let you fall. I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to hold you up. But they're holding you up sometimes all day when you're on your work computer and your arms aren't supported. So again, not having your arms supported um, is a great way to hurt yourself. So please don't do that. What you can see here is how most of us are working from home. Okay, she very nicely, she doesn't have access right now to um, a box to elevate up her laptop, but also because she's typing, okay, you don't want that laptop elevated while you're typing because then your forearms cannot rest on the surface that you're working on. So by her having her forearms resting on the table allows her upper trapezius to be able to be in a relaxed position. Okay. This isn't a hundred percent ideal. What you can see is her head is forward just a little bit. When your head is forward, same thing happens. Gravity tries to pull your head forward and all the muscles in the back of your neck say, don't worry, I'm not going to let that happen. I'll hold you up here. So ideally what you want is to look down with your eyes and not with your head. Okay, so again, arms are nicely supported here on the table, arms are supported on the armrests, and then your wrists and hands can be on your desk. Now, if you are home and you do have the ability to be able to work from a desktop and you have a chair that's adjustable and you have a desk, um, whoever thought that would be a luxury to be back in an office and be like, my chair moves, my desk moves, I have a keyboard, I'm not just on a laptop. Um, and when the world starts to get back to our new normal and we do start to get back to our office, what should we look like? So our monitor, ideally, um, and as you can see here, my mo you can't say my monitor right now is at eye level for me. So when I am looking directly ahead, I can see end show tips slideshow, which is the topmost bar of my laptop right now. So when I look straight ahead, that's exactly what I want to see. So for everybody looking at their laptop right now, I want you to look straight ahead. And I want you to see when you look straight ahead exactly what you can see, okay? If you are looking you know, up at your kitchen, your laptop's not high enough, okay? Um, if you are looking at the bottom line of your computer, so for me, I can see myself, Joyce Warner, Danita, Robin, and Nikki who are on this call with me, our other panelists. So if I am looking straight ahead and seeing my bottom most line, that means my monitor on my laptop is too high. So what you want to be able to see, okay, is the absolute top of your monitor. Your monitor should be 18 to 24 inches away from you, okay? When you sit, okay, you, the angle of your hips, so the angle that your torso and your femur make, like I said, want to be at a 90 degree to just a little bit greater than 90 degrees, right? So we talked about wanting our hips to be a little bit higher than our knees. So you can see this angle right here is slightly down sloping because our hips are higher than our knees. The edge of the seat is not coming into contact with the back of our knees and our feet are fixed flat on the ground. Now, very important, taking breaks, okay? Really, really, really important to not sit for eight hours a day. Um, if you know you have a conference call and the conference call is going to be on this wonderful device, um, if you're comfortable with it, put it on speakerphone. 
and stand up and take that call. Um, if you have headphones at home, put your headphones in, stand up, take that call. Um, if you have headphones in and you don't not need to be on a computer and you're just on the phone, um, walk around your house. So take the, even if you're literally walking from your kitchen to your living room and back again, over and over and over and over again, it's a way to incorporate movement into your meetings. Okay, so the recommendation okay, is taking a break every 25 minutes. Now, I know that's not realistic. If you're on a meeting for an hour, you're like, I have to sit for an hour. Soon as that meeting is over, stand up. Um, one of the things that I try to encourage um, our workers at Boston University is to hydrate, okay? Um, if it's not safe for you, always make sure, you know, ask your primary care provider, how much water should I be drinking in a day? Try to follow those guidelines. If you are keeping yourself hydrated, nature is going to call and you're going to have to use the restroom. And that is a great thing that you absolutely can't ignore and will get you up um, and moving. So by drinking water frequently throughout the day is gonna be your body's natural reminder to say, oh, time to get up now. So working from home, okay? If you have, if you are working from a laptop, and you have an external keyboard and mouse. And again, if you're looking for them, um, your city and town's um, free cycle um, websites, I can almost guarantee you, you will find an external keyboard and mouse on the free cycle where somebody's saying, I don't want this to be in a landfill, um, but I don't want it in my house anymore. It's turning into clutter. I'm going back to work. Um, again, sanitize it. And you can plug that into your laptop. So that way you can see here, what she did is she used three reams of paper. You can use books. Um, you can use your neighbor's recycling box. Um, if you're taking something from somebody outside of your house, um, you know, just make sure you wipe it down for cleanliness. Um, but you can prop your laptop up so that again, when she is looking straight ahead, she can see the topmost line of her laptop. Um, she should be sitting a little bit closer so that her forearms can be resting on the table so that her upper traps do not have to hold her arms up throughout the day. Okay. Like I said, not everybody has access to be able to have an external keyboard and an external mouse um, and you wake up in the morning and you have 101 emails that you have to respond to. So here, what you can see is that she's in good alignment, okay? Neutral posture, neutral head position, and she's looking down with her eyes and not her head. She also has her arms, forearms supported on the desk so that her upper traps can stay relaxed. If you are using a mouse, Okay, what you want to make sure is that your wrist is not coming in contact with the edge of your table. Every nerve, artery, and vein that supplies your hand, okay, so gets blood to it, gets blood away from it, and allows you to move and allows you to feel travels right through this space. Okay, most people have heard of carpal tunnel. This is your carpal tunnel. If you put pressure on your carpal tunnel because your wrist is resting against the edge of your desk or table, you're gonna start to have wrist problems. So what you wanna make sure is that there is nothing coming into contact with the undersurface of your wrist that could cause compression of those nerves, arteries, and veins. Okay, so what you can see here is the person's hand is turned slightly, okay? So that there's space in between that carpal tunnel, okay, and the forearm. What you also wanna make sure is when you're using a mouse, okay, move your arm, okay? The muscles in your arm and shoulder are much larger than the tiny little muscles in your hand and in your forearm forearms a little bigger than hand, um, but you want to use large muscle groups. The other thing you want to consider is can you switch hands? Okay. I know a lot of us aren't ambidextrous. I always joke that my left side is there just for decoration, um, but can you switch the mouse onto the left side so that you can give their right side a break? 
multiple monitors. Um, I know some people will have two monitors at home um, and will have two monitors in their workspace. So what you wanna make sure is the, your monitors, depending upon how many you have. If you are using each monitor equal time, so that's what the 50% means. So you're using the right monitor 50% of the time, the left monitor 50% of the time, that when you look straight ahead, okay, your eyes are looking at the middle of the screens. What that will allow is for you to only turn your head a total of 35 degrees of motion. So if this is neutral and I have a monitor to the left, okay, I turn my head about 15 degrees at the most and the same thing for the right. The majority of the motion you want to actually come from eye movements more than sweeping movements of your head. Okay, or worst case scenario, if you're just looking at the right monitor, move them a little bit so that the right monitor is straight in front of you. And if you only very, very, very occasionally need to look at another, then you're gonna offset that a little bit more. Okay, but ideally if you have two monitors, split time between the two, okay? They're angled slightly, okay? And that allows you for just very subtle movements of your neck and the majority of the movement coming from your eyes. Preventing eye strain, okay? So ideally, if you are in a room that has a window, you want to sit perpendicular just as she is to the window. You'll see here, I am sitting perpendicular to my window. So the light source is coming from the side and not straight at me, okay, which can affect the glare on my eyes, not from behind me, which can affect the, affect the glare on my screen. If you have blinds or shades, um, pull them down. Um, if you have an overhead light, you're best off having a light behind your laptop, okay, um, and not having an overhead light. Preventing eye strain. So how do we prevent strain on our eyes? Um, so one of the questions I frequently get asked when I give this presentation is, should I buy, these are not blue light glasses. Um, I spent so much time reading in academia and being on a computer that I've lost my ability to be able to read. Um, so how do we prevent eye strain and should we wear blue light glasses? So research just came out um, looking at eye strain and the use of blue light glasses. And I know some people will say, wow, they tremendously help. Um, being a scientist and a researcher, I always look for the evidence behind it. Um, and there is not evidence in a peer reviewed journal right now showing that um, blue light glasses do truly affect eye strain. Are they gonna hurt you? Absolutely not. Um, but there's just not concrete scientific data right now where I would say everybody should go buy them. There's not data to support that. Um, so again, if you want to wear them, they're not going to hurt you. Um, but it is not something I would recommend everybody run out and buy right away. The best thing pre for preventing eye strain is for every 20 minutes that you are looking at a screen. And that screen can be a laptop. That screen can be an iPad. That screen can be your wonderful um, phone. For every 20 minutes that you are looking at a screen, you should look 20 feet away for 20 seconds. So it's the 20, 20, 20 rule. Um, we could all take 20 seconds right now um, and look away from our screens because we've definitely been looking at a screen if you're on this webinar with me for 20, uh, for 20 minutes. Okay, so again, looking 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Your workspace, okay. So how do we organize our work area? Okay, so you have papers in front of you, you have a laptop in front of you. This is a great diagram for where we should keep the documents that we're working on. So our usual work, what we're working on right now should be right in front of you. Just beyond that is, I might need this, um, but I'm definitely not gonna need it right away. You put that in the periphery. 
And then beyond that, you have your non-working area. I'm definitely not going to need that today. So I'm going to put that as far away from me so I can keep my current workspace as neat as can be. And I don't have to reach too far to get to my materials. Okay. So standing desk at home. This is how I started my presentation. Okay. Um, you can use your kitchen counter. You can use your dresser. You can use your bureau. Um, you could, as I said, be in the bathroom and use your bathroom sink and take a box and lift it up um, if you don't need to type. So if you do need to type, ideally you want a high counter. Um, I've seen a lot of now, everybody ran out at the beginning of the pandemic and bought exercise equipment. And now on Craigslist and FreeCycle, all those treadmills that people bought a year ago, they're like, I don't want this anymore. I'm not gonna use it. Um, it's time to get rid of it. If you can move it, you can have it. Um, a lot of people are getting uh, free treadmills now because of the pandemic. Um, you can go to Home Depot, have a piece of wood cut is, if it is safe for you and the doctor allows. Um, you can place your laptop on that piece of wood on the bars um, of the treadmill going all the way across and turn that treadmill on at one mile an hour and just very slowly walk um, while you're on a webinar or while you're um, you know, on a conference call with somebody. Um, but I'm not telling everybody, go out and run and buy a treadmill. Most, um, including us, can't afford to do that right now. But if you see, wow, somebody's getting rid of one and I know I'm gonna be working from home for a while. Wow, I can go to Home Depot, I can get a piece of plywood, I can put it across the bars of the treadmill and I can make my own treadmill desk at home. Um, if work, if you are lucky enough to have an adjustable height desk, what you want to make sure um, is that your arms are supported on that desk when you're standing. So I wouldn't recommend a treadmill desk for answering emails or multitasking. Um, when you have to do work, you have to answer emails, you have to create a presentation, um, you have to work on writing a policy. You need to, if you're standing, make sure while you're typing that your forearms are supported. And the same thing with the monitor height. Okay, you want it to be an arm's length away from you and you want the top of the monitor um, to be when you're looking straight ahead, you want to be able to see the top line of the document that you're working on. This is what I see all too often. This is what gets people in to see me. Okay, so sitting slouched. Um, if you are that person and your eyes are going like mine were and you're finding yourself looking or you're having to increase the font um, of your emails because you can't see it anymore, um, please don't wind up like this. This is a great way to cause neck um, and upper back pain. Please make sure you sit back in your chair, okay? Lift your monitor up. Um, again, this is a great way to create neck and upper back pain. Same thing with a laptop. Okay, try to sit up as much as you possibly can, have your back supported against the chair and look down with your eyes, okay? And not your upper back and your neck. Okay, so finally, how do we work well from home? One, a dedicated workspace. We went over today how to set up your desk, how to set up your chair, how to set up your computer. Dedicated work time. Okay, what are your priorities for the day? What are your set work hours? I know I got into a very bad habit of, you know, students would email me at 10 o'clock at night and I would check my email before I went to bed and feel guilty not responding. Set work hours from home, okay? I will start work today at 8.30. I will end work today at five o'clock. I will end work at 5.30 and then shut it down. If you've been on a computer all day long, please try to shut down um, screens after that and just give your eyes a break. Um, get dressed for the day. Um, it's You're a lot more productive when you put work clothes on, um, even if people can just see you from the neck up. Um, make sure your meetings are conform, confirmed. Um, technology. Before today's webinar, we did a 15-minute tech check. Um, if you're expecting a large meeting, make sure your technology is working. Make sure your camera is working. Make sure your audio is working. Commit to your health, okay? What does that mean? Eat a healthy diet, okay? Everybody knows on the food plate, half of your plate should be filled with fruits and vegetables. Um, and then the other half of your plate should be filled um, with protein and grains, okay, or carbohydrates, and don't forget your calcium at the top. 
Uh, make sure you're drinking enough water. Make sure you hydrate throughout the day. Make sure you're doing, if it's safe for you, some form of weight-bearing exercise. Make sure to breathe in stressful situations. Try to get eight hours of sleep at night. Dedicate downtime, okay? Um, take lunch. Turn your computer off at lunch. Try not to, well, I'm not on my computer at lunch, so you know what? I'm going to look at my phone. It's the same thing. Okay, so try to dedicate downtime where you're not exposed to the blue light um, of a screen. If it's safe for you, get outdoors, get some fresh air. Um, try not to eat with technology. And then last, try to connect with friends and loved ones. Um, it's very important for our mental health. Finally, um, I just wanted to give you some resources um, for information, um, CDC website, OSHA website, um, and then a great article um, that had come out on the importance of spending time between sitting and standing throughout the day. And I will now open it up um, to our questions and answers. So first, I just want to say thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I am going to just to make two quick announcements and then if there's any questions, people can post them in the q and I know we have just a few minutes before the one o'clock hour and people have opened their schedule up for today. First, I wanted to say that next Wednesday, May 12th, is our second Wellness Wednesday, and it will be an introduction to yoga class. Um, it will be a class that teaches both basic yoga for you to do in the traditional sense on the floor, but also some chair yoga if you're really new to yoga and you're looking to add some of that into your uh, healthy lifestyle. Um, and if you have not registered for the challenge, you can still do so at FEEA dot org forward slash challenge and last but not least for me i wanted to announce our winner today is paul martinow he won our raffle today for a staples gift card and uh, paul we will be in touch with you this afternoon about getting that to you so congratulations um and kelly i don't i don't think we've had any questions so far first off i just want to say oh there is one there's a question about the PowerPoint. Um, what I would say is we're looking at, uh, we're testing the video this afternoon to make sure that there's no PII on it. And then um, assuming that's the case, then we'll, we will share that out on social media and you'll be able to access it that way. Um, and to share with colleagues who missed it because of our Facebook snafu today. Um, and I certainly learned a lot today. Um, certainly for me with my vision, the 2020, 20, looking away is a great thing and I'm gonna to try to build that into my day. I know we're seeing compliments here on the Q&A. Any questions? Some question did come in. When working from home, I have a tendency to sit on one foot. Will this cause problems? Yes. Um, so when you sit on one foot, remember we talked about the back of your knee, all those nerves and arteries and veins travel through the back of your knee. When your knee is bent um, at its maximum angle, which typically is what we do when we sit on our foot, you're compressing those nerves and veins. You'll notice, I'm sure if you sit on one foot for too long, um, your leg starts to go numb and tingly. Um, so I do not recommend sitting on one foot. That's a really good question. Um, when you feel the need to move, try and stand up for a few minutes, move if you're able to move your workspace um, and just stand up for a little while. Great, any other questions? No, well, it is 12.59. Kelly, thank you so, so much. I know we all learned a lot today. Thank you to Danita and Blue Cross also. Oh, somebody, one last question. Would you recommend sitting on a ball? <laughs> That's actually, you know what? That's a phenomenal question. So for short periods of time, as long as your forearms are supported on um, a desk um, or a table, the one mistake people make with the ball is they don't put enough air in it. Okay. So when you sit on a ball, you put air in it and you're like, oh my gosh, no more air can fit in it. Sit on it. If you sink down on that ball, there's not enough air in it. Okay. Make sure you buy one that's anti-burst. When you sit down on a ball, there should be very, very little give on it. It should be a very, very, very firm surface. The other thing is if you are five, three and below, you want a 55 centimeter ball. If you are five, three to six, four, 
you want a 65 centimeter ball. Okay, six, four and above, you want a 75 centimeter ball. So you have to make sure you have the right size ball for your height. It's a good question. Excellent. Well, lots of thanks coming in. And I will just say again, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And we hope to see you all on the challenge and or next week at our next Wellness Wednesday. I hope everybody has a fabulous day. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. Stay well.